line of Jenna Blair. Go ahead, please. Hi, thanks for having me on today. Um, first off, I'd like to remind the working group that Borrelia are relapsing fever germs, and just like the rest, they're capable of antigenic variation. That fact alone makes it a ridiculous notion to attempt to vaccinate against it and asinine at best to say that vaccines for spire keeps work by turning human blood into tick disinfectants. Secondly, OSBE is pamphresis, a fungal-like endotoxin that causes immune suppression, and that means that it is the opposite of a vaccine. For the last 18 and a half years, the activist groups Action Lime and now Truth Cures have been filing complaints with every .gov agency anyone can think of. This was even brought to the FDA formally, that OSBE causes immune suppression and a systemic disease, say that Weiler and Philippe. And I'm directly quoting here from a patent owned by David Persing and Robert Schoen, who say that OSPE causes a disease indistinguishable from late chronic neurologic Lyme, but never once has any .gov agency or MD answered the question as to how OSPE alone could cause the same exact multi-system protein disease. No spirochetes, same disease. The science was settled as far back as 1986 when, for example, Paul DeRay, who's a top army pathologist, reported that the lymphocytes and spinal fluid looked like leukemia or lymphoma and appeared to be Epstein-Barr transformed. Also in the 1980s, it was Alan Steer himself who reported that this was like pseudo-lymphoma. Gary Wormser has reported that OSPE causes immune suppression three times now. So, do we really not know anything about relapsing fever organisms? Post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome or chronic Lyme or whatever you want to call it is really an acquired immune deficiency or what the NIH calls post-sepsis syndrome. Everyone says so. There is no question. Every subcommittee needs to be viewing the disease through the lens of this really being a B-cell AIDS. The only way forward is for HHS to admit the role of OSPE as a cell disabler. OSPE could never have been a vaccine. It never was and it never will be because it is a fungal-like endotoxin. Spiroketal, spiroketal diseases are not easily treatable infections. They are acquired immune deficiency detonators with a cancer-like twist. We demand that you answer as to what the structure and function of OSPE is, and that alone will give you the foundation to squash all of the controversy. If this committee fulfills its intended purpose altruistically, you will look at the existing science to validate what is really going on with Lyme disease, and you will recommend a criminal prosecution and stop the madness. TruthCares.org has all the data in their charge sheet. Thank you. Crickets. The operator, I think we've got one more commenter. Is that true? Yeah, the mm -hmm. line of Kathy Nodoff. Go ahead, please. Good afternoon. Uh, the biggest complaint I have about the crazy controversy regarding Lyme disease is the vehement denial of fact, truth, and the real science that exists today. There is only one truth, not tailor-made versions of it to suit each and every one of us. This committee will have failed everyone if the U.S. government does not state for public record what exactly OSPE is, or outer surface protein is, protein is and what its structure and function are. The answer to this will cut to the chase and answer all other questions. If we know it is a fungal endotoxin that causes immunosuppression, then we can end this false dichotomy over persistence and antibiotics. Killing spirochetes is not the answer to this disease. There is a crime committed here. The crime is the falsified case definition of Lyme disease. We demand prosecution of the individuals who are responsible for changing the case definition at the 1994 Dearborn Conference chaired by Barbara Johnson yep. of the CDC and aided by Alan Sears' research fraud used to falsify the case definition. This conference facilitated the approval of the science or of the since-failed Lymerix vaccine, which has been pulled off the market for causing the same multi-system disease as those of us suffering from neural Lyme. OSPE was in the vaccine, and OSPE and other lipoproteins like it are shed with flebs or other exosomes by spirochetes. Spirochetes cause disease by going straight to the germinal centers of our lymph nodes. See the work done by Nicole Baumgart and Steve Bartol. The current testing makes absolutely no sense when you, just, when you understand that Borrelia are relapsing fever germs. Borrelia is differentiated by their flagellin genes, or DNA. Since all relapsing fever organisms are capable of antigenic variation, they can change their outer surface protein as a way of evading the host's immune system. 
the only scientifically valid way to test for Borrelia infections would be to test for flagellar antibodies instead of outer surface proteins because it is specific and it never changes. Testing for so many antibodies all at the same time is not logical or valid by any standard. Yale's Fickrig and Flavel patented a test in 1991, patent number 5618.533, which is 94 to 95% accurate during all stages of the disease. This is obviously the test that should be used. Until we get the correct definition of the disease, we will never find a cure. We have wasted too many years and too many dollars trying to fix a disease that is currently defined incorrectly by design. I am tired of watching my friends die and suffer torturous life due to this crime. The insanity of it all needs to stop now. Go to truthcares.org for the scientific validation needed to prosecute this crime. Great job, John and Kathy. And this is Rich Walitsky again. I guess, operator, if we're able to get um, Gary Sweeney back on the line.